What I tell to any student who comes to my office thinking they want to do research, and I'll say, well, why do you want to do research? And they'll say, well, I want to learn about it, and that's great. And I'll, then I'll say, well, what do you want to do? We have many different projects. What would you like to get involved in? And the answer usually is, I don't know. And I'll say, okay, I'm going to list 10 things. Tell me when your heart rate goes up and which of those 10 things your heart rate goes up. That means there's something about that. We don't know what it is at this point, it doesn't matter, but that means that, that you're either passionate about it or it resonates because of a personal issue, it doesn't matter. But I think you have to start with something that gets you excited, you know. And if you don't know, go, go pick up a couple of journals and just thumb through them. You don't have to read them. Look at titles, look at images, and wherever you start to stop more than you just thumb, that's a good starting point, and then just go from there. Uh, science, especially in the area of, of biomedicine, is very young. Um, it's a field that in some ways is only a hundred years old. When we read textbooks or we learn about biology in, in high school or in college, it, it sort of feels like everything's known. Um, and, and I think when you feel that way, you, you also respond by thinking that there's nothing I can do here to make, to, to learn more or to make things better. What I would urge people to realize is that there's so much to do because there are so many things that we don't know and yet what's limiting us from knowing those things is not having enough creative people. Mentoring is the most gratifying part of my job as a deputy director of this institute. I think it's very important for students to get mentors. Don't be deterred or discouraged that these are so-called big shot in the field, including the Nobel laureates. Don't be shy, go up and ask. In my own career, I find out those who are most successful in science, in their professions, are also likewise the most generous. It doesn't matter where they, what they want to work on, you need to study the math, the physics, and the chemistry. And on a practical note, that makes you such a more attractive a candidate when you're trying to find a job. I tell the freshmen that it's really important that you learn math, chemistry, and physics because believe it or not, you're really gonna use a lot of that in my junior year course. Students in our educational system, they have to have some faith that in fact all those courses are meant to build a foundation by which they can understand even more complex principles and utilize that knowledge. And uh, I wish uh, someone had told me that, but I make a point to tell my students. The, the message I would give people is just remember that it only takes um, a year or two of reading and thinking and learning to get to the cutting edge, to get to the edge where you know as much as everybody in the world currently knows. And after that point, you're now contributing. Always strive for your, your dream job. Don't be modest and be aggressive, be ambitious, aspire to the highest level. Even though you might want to say, oh, reality might not allow me to do this or that, but the whole idea is to dream, dream big, dream higher than you ever thought you could. And if you didn't set that higher bar for yourself, you could motivate yourself to get there. One of my favorite quotes is from Louis Pasteur who of course said it in French, that uh, chance favors the prepared mind. This is very important, I think, uh, in science and probably in all walks of life, because everyone has a certain amount of random good luck that happens to them. And you have to be ready without prior notice to capitalize on it. Uh, you may have a chance, if you're looking for a job, you may have a chance encounter with a potential future boss, and if uh, he or she mentions some topic, if, if you say, oh yes, I just read a paper on that, or, or you're able to comment intelligently on it, you're going to land on your feet. Try to find something that you like, enjoy what you do, let it show, and never give up. Because things are not always easy, and I think it is extremely important to, you know, you need to trust yourself, you need to follow, what you decided to do and don't give up on the first or second or seventh obstacle. I mean, you need to, you need to just pursue your dream until, until it becomes reality. And this is what very often happens. I think this is an amazing time in science and engineering. And if you have any passion for science and engineering, 
you know, jump in because the tools, the opportunities to learn, um, the scales, you can look at the, you know, from the, the angstrom level all the way up to the macroscopic level. I, I'm, I fully believe in the next five to ten years we're going to transform the pharmaceutical industry based on tissue engineering and the approaches we're taking there. I truly believe in the next 10 to 20 years we'll be able to regenerate a human limb that we can't understand today because of the same kinds of tools. And, and I think we're going to transform medicine. And I, I think now's the time to get involved because the opportunities are just boundless.